Welcome to Uncut Angling. I'm with my good buddy Zach McBride. We're on the Rainy River ice fishing for lake sturgeon. Would you use a single minnow like this? Look. Would you use a single minnow like that? I'm not a big sturgeon angler. Yeah, that's great. Really? Well, all I'm doing is... One? Oh no, I'm gonna put You're two You're killing on. him. You're killing him. I wouldn't be worried about a hook if I was him. Do I let him take it a bit first? Depends on how the strike is. If you feel him hit it, just load up on it. So I just felt one hit my line. Really? Like swim across it. To mine? Maybe. You know, like they sometimes swim suspended or whatever and they'll clip your line like a drive-by. A dry fly? You never ice fish with dry flies? Never. Be a different presentation that fish haven't seen before. Yeah, it would. Did you say yeah, it would? Yeah, it would, definitely. Could you keep one down far enough in the water column to hook her up on the windy rig? Oh, 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 oh. On. Nice. Oh, oh, oh. Never sacrificed. Is that a walleye? A sun chip. Did he pick it up or did he just bang it? Uh, yeah, he just kind of leaned over with it. Is that a good thing? Probably swimming up current. That was amazing. When he moves the whole rod, yeah. You don't mind me cleaning some of this out, do you? No. Just if I nick your line a couple times. No, that's fine. I'm using Power Pro, so. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, the strength of them is just unbelievable, like relentless battle. Oh, you know he's close when that angle changes really fast in the line. So he's gonna do some real big pumps right now. Yeah. Well, he's trying to throw it in reverse and this is where fish are lost. Okay, so what should I do? Just not put the boots to him? Not too much pressure. Okay, I let him tire himself out kind of in, yeah. in circles. This is the 38 inch gussy rod made by Frabel and it's an amazing big fish rod, but I don't think there's an ice rod made that would properly no. do this. And that's become very clear very fast here. Yeah. Should I stick my rod down there to get her going or something? I think mean, just momentum this way to get her coming. Oh yeah, her, that is, her face is there. Like I, we can see her nose down there, it's stuck in the slush. <laughs> Look at that burp. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> as big as a fish as I can imagine coming out of a hole in the ice. Yeah, what a pig. And these fish don't need to be rushed back into the water, and I certainly don't want to encourage you to keep any fish out of the water, but a prehistoric fish like this is built completely differently. Their girls aren't nearly as fragile, and if you don't let them freeze, you've got a little bit more of a tolerance. My biggest fish through the ice by far. There's the fish taking up the whole hole. Oh, he goes! Right on, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you so much, Zach. Awesome. The super strong wire on that hook is so key, and that's all I'm using is an emerald shiner. An emerald shiner like that is the number one forage in a river like this yep. year round, running in from Lake of the Woods and also just living in the river. I'm gonna hook it in through the mouth. This is exactly how I do it for a walleye, run along the body. Simple seems to be the ticket, uh, getting that presentation down there, keeping it still, Yeah. come along, gobble it up. And Zach's experimenting with live minnows. I've, I've, I've seen that he uses a variety of different bait fish here just to see what the flavor of the day is, the soup du jour, if you will. You have one of those minnows hooked each way, eh? Yeah. Looks kind of cool. You ever caught one doing that? Usually that's the cat's meow. Is it? Yeah. I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> We're using jigs and minnows. <laughs> okay, so the video will start with the setup. Or, you know, maybe we'll backspace the setup or whatever. But. How much farther? Enough? Yeah, that's great. Let's try it right here. Wow, that slushy was terrible. Yeah, there's giant slush pockets. We are on the Rainy River today. Welcome to Uncut England, by the way. I'm with Zach McBride, <laughs> local hot stick on the river here, and we are putting in a night fishing session for Lake Sturgeon. I'm excited to do this. Zach has done this over the years on both sides of the river. It actually used to be legal to fish in Canada, and it no longer is. So to do this now, we actually have to come into the United States of America to target giant fish. Is it, it's a couple feet deeper this way? Yeah, I want I want that break from 15 to 20. Yeah. So set the shack up right here? Yeah. I'll drill another hole right now. Okay. Okay, yeah, go ahead and widen it out. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's important to mention, you know, we're fishing with 10 inch holes, which is as big as a factory auger is made, but it is so important to widen that hole out at the bottom as much as you can just yeah. by drilling angles. So, so far, I'm most of the way through on this hole and I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna tilt that auger at an angle. That way the top stays that 10 inches, but the bottom is flared out in all directions, especially favoring the downstream direction, of course. And that way it's gonna be so much easier to direct a big fish up this hole. We seem to be set up on a pretty good slush pocket here. <laughs> uh, 
it's not necessarily always a problem, but you know, you could go a mile or two of the river and it could be worse, could so be better. Looking for a spot that was free of slush wouldn't be better than just fishing where you want to fish here kind of thing? Well, I think we'll, we'll kind of battle the elements and uh, let's do it. Instant. Oh, on. Heavy, right? Oh yeah. That's heavy. Zach's got a really heavy fish hooked here. That's fighting weird, like it's, it feels like dead weight, eh? Yeah, you wanna maybe just stir it up a little down there? Can you feel under the edge of the ice? I can feel there's lots of slush there. I think I'm hooked on the ice, no. Like no fish hooked on the ice? I don't, yeah, just when I pull, there's no, there's no give at all now. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna use like a two by four or something that I can push my line straight down. Yeah, that way. I'm thinking I'll do something with the chisel maybe. Did you see the angle it went down there at? Yeah. Does it feel like it's sliding smoothly? Uh, I don't know. If you pull slowly, it should be pulling from the bottom, right? That's good though, that's what we need. When it pops off that bottle, there'll be slack, eh? Oh, bad things, good things. There we go. Are you loose? Yeah, well he's free, he's fighting again. So we've got a direct line now again to this extremely heavy fish, but what you just witnessed was some crazy special ops stuff. What we had to do, because we had this fish, way off away what do you think like 20 feet away more yeah. who knows we really have no way of knowing <laughs> but he came up to the ice and he got himself in just even a little bit of slush and what he was able to do with that angle so far away is he went dead weight on us so what we did is first we tried poking down with the scoop couldn't make any gains so what i did is i affixed this uh, water bottle very professionally with some electrical tape just to get a smooth edge here where we could run the line around and I covered up all the rough edges with electrical tape. And then what we did is we just got ourselves a better angle on that fish. I dropped the chisel down and then I even had about 12, 15 feet of rope hanging off of it. So essentially, by the time I dropped that all down, pushing down with the line, you could picture that his line was down like this and then back up to the fish. And what we were able to do is free that fish, pull him off the bottom of the ice. And it made a little awkward bow and arrow pluck when it came off, but we have a direct connection to this fish again in result. He's at the bottom of the hole. Yep. Here he comes, here he comes. Yeah. <laughs> Another amazing fish. This is a fatty, Zach. Oh! It's just a matter of getting his head started with all that slush down there. You can see that's a standard 10 inch hole, but we've got it hollowed out at the bottom like a lampshade almost. Makes it that much easier to get their head started. Those barbels are what it scratches along the bottom with as external mouth taste buds that it uses to feel out the bottom and then drops that mouth down, sucks stuff up. That's why we're focused on the bottom. Awesome fish, buddy. Get on. <laughs> Feels so funny not using a flash rod. Turn it on if you want to <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> Isn't it nice to not have to stare at your screen? It is nice. <laughs> it's so nice. Uh, not using flashers, laying it on the bottom. Jake's and mouse. So poor. I got one. You're going to set that? I got that one. There you go. Another good one, eh? Yeah. Wow, that is cool. Feeling them actually with their sucker going down on it. Go, 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 go. You can see we're not using flashers. This hole, there was no transducer removed. With the way sturgeon feed on the bottom with that sucker is the highest percentage spot to run into them is on the bottom. So Zach has us just laying our jigs right on the bottom. And just once in a while, picking up tension on it just to feel that jig and see if something's on it. Yeah. But since we're fishing that way, it just doesn't really do that much for you to have the flasher going. You're just going to be sitting on the bottom regardless of whether you see a fish. So it's not like you can anticipate the bite or try and tease the bite. Oh man, just need to get his head started. We've uh, had to deal with that insane slush and now <laughs> not a factor, but getting him up the hole still is. Oh yeah. Oh, this is incredible. This opportunity to get out here in the dark, lay some jigs and minnows on the bottom, get down over 20 feet, and this is what's lurking down there. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah, just a beauty. Two different jurisdictions of two different countries on either side of the river. In Canada, Ontario, they don't even want you to fish for these fish. But luckily for us, there's a season open almost year round, catch and release for these amazing creatures in Minnesota. They've got a tagging program. They're doing a good job monitoring the population. There he goes on his own strength. Oh. <laughs> Do you want half of this? Yeah. Mm, so when filming at night, a good variety of snacks is essential. Right now Zach's working on a Twix bar. Bristling sardines. Old Trapper beef jerky. Maynard's Swedish fish. More beef jerky. Jack Link's. Cheesies. Swedish fish. We just did that one. Dude, 
Did you just do that one? Peppies, a deadly combination with Gatorade. Ruffles all dressed. Nate's Bates. Gummy bears. Doritos. Wine gums. Squirty juicy squirts. Red Bull gives you wings. Flex gives you wings. And uh, some Maynard Swedish fish. <laughs> Had you done that one yet? There's a hit. The biggest fish that swims in fresh water bites the lightest. Yeah. How does it feel? It seems like a long fish because of the growiness. You all ready for this? Because all of a sudden he's going to be here. You have him right there. He just needs to get his head started. Yep. 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 Uh, a little more. <sighs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the norm. Like, how many times can this happen in one night? Strange things done in the midnight sun. What can you say? The freaks come out at night. <laughs> Yo, know, this is just a truly great body of water that we're able to fish.